Now, I like to work every day, and I'm always scared of San Francisco drivers, so there is no way I wasn't going to take a talk called How Not to Get Hit by a Car, Part 1, The Right Hook. Please welcome up Eric Enderly. All right, now I know we're in San Francisco and I don't need to tell you all that biking is awesome, but biking is awesome. There's just something about cruising past a line of gridlock cars that just really warms my soul, you know? But I could stand up here and talk all day about the benefits of bicycling, but it would include phrases like saving the planet and people-powered fun, and nobody wants that. So instead, I'm gonna talk about what keeps people off the roads, that is, fear of cars. And this to me is a tragedy because I want you to bike. I want your grandmother to bike, I want your dog to bike. I want everyone in this room to bike. So today I'm gonna to be talking about one of the most common ways to get hit by cars, the right hook, and how to avoid it. But before we get into that, I just wanna point out something. The majority of bike crashes are caused by nothing at all. Yes, that's right, over half of bike crashes are caused by you falling off your bike. <laughs> And it's really only a small percentage of crashes that happen by cars. So just keep that in mind as we're sharing this today. So this is the right hook. So you're biking down the street, minding your own business. Somebody flies past you on the left, bonus points if they buzz you. And they slam on their brakes and turn right. And if you're lucky, you'll slam into their passenger side door. And if you're unlucky, they'll run you over. Another variant of this happens when you're already to the right of the car. Like this crops up at uh, red lights or when you're, when you're passing slow moving cars. And again, the car just kind of drives over you and that's just no good for anybody. So a study in Toronto showed that various uh, variants of the right hook account for nearly 20% of all bike crashes. So it, it does matter. But it's not the most common crash. So why are we talking about it today? Well, for a couple reasons. To me, the right hook is really frustrating because it's so easy to avoid. Once you know the signs, <laughs> it will never happen to you. And the second is, it's kind of unique to bicycling. Like, as a car, you don't really need to worry about the person in the lane next to you just turning right randomly. So why does the right hook happen? The first has to do with visibility. So here's a diagram of where cars are looking generally as they go down the road. And you'll see that behind the right is not such a good situation. And this is compounded by the fact that bicyclists like to hang out in the blind spot, so don't do that. Another one is the bike lane is a lane of traffic, people. You can't just cut over it. And a lot of drivers get this wrong, a lot of bicyclists do as well. I'm a daily bike commuter, and it's a rare day that this does not happen. <laughs> so just watch out for that. And the next has to do with simple speed. Drivers look at us and they say, oh, you're just a punk on a bike. How fast can you really go? Well, the answer, Mr. Hypothetical Car Driver, is upwards of 15 or 20 miles an hour, AKA the speed of traffic in many parts of the city. So that's what it is, how do you avoid it? The first is how you approach drivers. I like to pretend every driver is a sociopathic murderer that will take <laughs> no greater pleasure than to my untimely demise. So maybe give them some room. The next is to trust nobody. <laughs> Every driver is Frank Underwood. Is that man really turning left? Or is he spinning a web of lies and plotting your political downfall? Better not pull out in front of him. <laughs> Watch out. Getting back to the right hook specifically, it's impossible to get right hooked if you're not on the right side of the car. It seems simple, but I see people get this wrong every single day. So to stay behind or to the left. The next thing you should do is seriously don't go on the right side of the car. Like, I cannot <laughs> emphasize this enough. The right side, it's Satan, it's hellfire, it's eternal pain and torment. The left side is puppies. <laughs> Which would you rather encounter? <laughs> so, it's your right to take the lane. No matter what the signs say, like, you can take it at any time, so exercise it. The thing about being in the middle of a lane is that then if drivers want to run you over, they have to acknowledge you first. <laughs> And that is a huge improvement. <laughs> so if you're in the habit of riding on sidewalks, first of all, shame on you. Sidewalks are for walking, not for biking. And, <laughs> and cars are not looking on the sidewalk. Th this is just four ways you can just get fucked on the sidewalk. Just don't, don't do it. <laughs> and then finally, just know what's behind you. Get a mirror, put it on your helmet, put it on your handlebars. That way you can see if someone's coming up behind you, you can take uh, proactive measures and just, yeah, know what's behind you. 
So I want to leave you with this. Biking is a great way to get around, great way to get some exercise. And I'm hoping that today you learned a little bit so that you can go out and enjoy this great American pastime with your friends and family. Because now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Thank you. Thank you.